What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to pack a ruck for training for SFAS. It's going to be a little bit different than the other videos I have or will come, but this is going to be specifically how to pack a training ruck where you're not going to adjust a lot of stuff. So let's check it out. Alright, first thing. So we're going to pack a training ruck. Important things to know with the training ruck. Really don't want to be adjusting this a lot. Figure out the setup that works well and then just keep it packed, keep it ready to roll. That way you can just quickly throw it on, go out for a ruck. So today's goal, we're going to want to have it 35 pounds dry. That's without our four quarts of water. Four quarts, which we're going to want to take on a ruck minimum just to have water with you. Um, you could also, you know, use a water bottle, whatever, but I would suggest getting familiar with your straws, camping straws and navigating that, drinking equally out of both sides so you don't get, you know, a wobbly. First thing, I'm not going to pack my full sleep system because if we're just training, we're not going to be sleeping out there. Uh, I have an extra sleep system with just the bib and the summer weight. So that's what we're going to use. Just kind of get that same packing motion, get some soft stuff on the bottom. I'm just going to leave this in my rock. I don't ever really use it. I have another full sleep system that I can use instead, but you guys can use whatever. Put something that mimics, you know, your sleeping bag at the bottom. We're going to use a trash bag first again, but we're going to put the sleep system in a wet weather bag, just double bag it, just in case we go through any water or whatever. So I got this bag. Now these are my three mil heavy duty bags. We need the contractor bag, fill the bottom. Make sure that zipper pocket is not zipped. Make sure all our straps are loosened up here. All right, grab our sleep system, grab our wet leather bag. Put that down in. Let's jam our sleep system down. I said just my summer weight just to kind of fill the bottom. I'm just gonna wrap that up. Just work all the air out of that too. It's going to give us a nice bottom to our rock. Alright, the bottom, I know I said don't zipper that little flap in the middle, but you're going to want to actually do that. So, at least for this training rock, um, that will get you the, the shelf and you'll be able to cinch up from the bottom. Because what was happening is there's too much or not enough stuff to fill the top of the rock, which is where you want the weight. So it's kind of feeding the purpose. So <clears throat> I'm gonna show you guys here. I'm gonna grab another trash bag here for the top. I'm gonna put some light stuff in the bottom here. Just my t-shirts. And then I'm gonna go up. Uniforms in here. Boots on the side. Good thing is I weighed the whole rock out. Figure out how much. Stuff I need to put in here, so makes it a little bit easier. Go. Put these MREs in. I got six MREs here. Fill a nice shelf. Which this will be a huge help if you guys are 
doing SFRE or anything like that, you're doing team vents, always great to have a shelf on top. They just putting a bar on there or whatever. some adjustments that I wanted to show you before I you know cinch everything back down so I actually took these straps into here I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen real quick I ran these front straps which are gonna connect right here into these loops or these uh, clips I ran them in behind here as you can see so I'll show you guys here I ran them in here and that'll help keep the pack still secure to the frame because I have my frame set up higher so I can get that load even higher. I'm going to cinch this bad boy down and then I'm going to add my water and we're going to see how heavy total it is. It was 35 without water so I think that's a good training weight. I would start lighter, um, maybe even not use the Molly 2 to start to get that under your, your feet if you've never rucked before but then we'll uh, Slowly be upgrading to the Molly 2 and then heavier weights from there, like I've shown before. So let's get this inch down. Like I said, I always start and push this from sit on it. You know, pull these straps down on the back up. Cinch these down. I have them clipped in through, back through here, through those hooks. So cinch that down. Really pull them tight. That'll get that up off the frame there. Which that's great if you guys want to put your sleep system down here. All you do is loosen that, hook it right through those, and it'll cinch the whole sleep system right to the bottom there. Go back to the top. We'll clean up these straps then. that tight pull back down just kind of work them back and forth so you get it nice and tight there we go just tight let's feed these through the top here just clean up your straps a little bit I prefer to just tuck tuck and twist them that seems to work pretty well for me because you don't want to tape them necessarily. If you have to loosen them, it's a pain in the ass. Um, you can, if it's your training rook, whatnot, for just tuck, twist them back on each other. That'll keep them pretty neat. Bottoms here. Just feed them back down through. That's what I was saying, if you have like little Velcro pieces, that works great for them. But I just prefer to, you know, put these down through here like this. Little overrun's fine. Just don't want a lot of big stuff that can get snagged. Pull the side straps tight. Feed that back through here, just get it out of the way. Even feed it back through the frame just a little bit, just to keep it out, out of the way there. Good there. It's a nice solid rock. 
it's not gonna sit upright and most of the weight is up to the top so it is gonna naturally flip forward like that so just something to be aware of So these straps are these uh, hoses. It's gonna kind of be a pain in the ass, to, to be honest. So I mean, if you can feed them back down through the strap, so they just kind of you know sit right here, close enough you can get to them, but close enough that they're not in the way, so you can tuck them back. Pull the strap tight here. Pretty good. See, that's not wobbling around too much. Got the other one. Pro tip, always have the nozzles obviously facing you. They don't always sit that way in the thing. That's what you're gonna wanna do. Like I said, if you can feed this, you know, into your strap somewhere where it's not gonna, you know, be bouncing around crazy. Just so you can kind of get to it quickly. Don't really have to worry about it, you know going all over the place. Just keep those straps, nozzles close. Switch that down. Just nice tight on there. Let's throw her on. load saw on there it's nice and tight this load actually feels pretty great right now right, there you go we're all set you're gonna have some straps that hang out you know you can try to tuck them away stuff's just gonna hang off the front a little bit I mean that's just the nature of the beast but we're all set here. You can strap this. And I can help adjust your load. But we'll go side view here. You can see, it's nice, it's all flowing upwards. I got my straws right here. Quick access, they're not gonna get hung up on too much stuff. You know, you can kinda try and take them down, but it's pretty much your loadout. So, she's all set. Great training rug, feels 
pretty good. Weight's pretty high up. Um, 35 pounds. I'm gonna go hit the trails. And uh, that's how you build your training rock for SFAS. I'm gonna add, I just weighed it 45 pounds exactly with water. So basically 10 pounds for uh, the four quarts of water added on there. So yeah, pretty good. So it's a good rock, 45 pounds total. Like I said, you go a little lighter and get right to that 35 pounds, but anytime you drink, you're gonna be you know fluctuating with your weight. So that's why it's important to drink equally out of both straws. Kind of keep that balance, keep it centered. Go from there. Thanks for watching.